Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Many people are looking at the 400-year prophecy and waiting for the hand of God to recover Judah and Israel. However, one of the things that Judah and Israel do, just like they did in the first Exodus, is they cry out to God. They cry out to God, begging God to take them, to lift them out of this, their captivity. When we look in chapter 31 of the book of Jeremiah, and I'm going to start at the 18th verse. I want you to notice how different verses 18 and 19 sound from anything being spoken by people. After Jacob's trouble, Israel will actually grieve and moan due to the correction she received. She will beg God to be brought back. She will beg to be brought back to God. All right. And in verse 20, it shows God's compassion. Is Ephraim my dear son? He is a pleasant child. For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. When we go on to verse 23 in the 31st chapter, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof. I will bring again their captivity. Brothers and sisters, no man knows the day, no man knows the hour. Before we leave, the world will know who Judah is, who Israel is. Yes, the 19th, the 20th is tomorrow, marking the 400 years. However, no man knows the day, no man knows the hour. We are in the midst of Jacob's trouble. We are in the midst, and God is going to judge those nations. We are going to come out, a remnant of us are going to come out in the midst of this. But we cry out to God. We cry out to God. We don't look for the nations to give us up. If you remember in the first Exodus, Pharaoh wouldn't let go. God hardened his heart to show the world not only that he is God, but he is the one and only true God of God. There is no God beside him, before him. There is none to compare. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And just like in the first exodus, in the second exodus, our captors do not want to let us go. But we cry out to God. We cry out to God. Remember, brothers and sisters, no man knows the day. No man knows the hours. We do know there were ten plagues. We do know there were ten plagues. Okay? And those plagues are happening all around the world and they're increasing the waters turn to blood what is blood death it's death frogs different things the um the hail i'm not going to go through all 10 of the um plagues although i can and i should i guess for some during the exodus during the exodus the first one with aaron touched the waters we have to go through the process. We have to go through the process. God is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Okay. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. The land of bondage, those who held Israel, they did not want to let Israel go. They did not want to let go. All right. And it's not going to happen in one second. God can do anything he wants. Let's be clear. Let's be clear before somebody takes it out of context. We're going to talk about those 10 plagues. We're going to talk about the plagues. All right. The first plague. Aaron stretched out his rod in the waters of Egypt. Their streams, their rivers, their ponds, their pools became blood. That was the first plague. The second plague. He smote, smote their borders with frogs. There were frogs everywhere. Okay, the third plague, there was lice. Okay, the fourth, there was flies everywhere in their houses. 
in there from the king's palace to the paupers, king to the pauper, rich man to poor man. It was also after the fourth plague that God said, I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarm of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. We're in Exodus chapter 8. He made a distinction. He made a distinction between Israel and the Egyptians. The fifth, the fifth plague was a meringue, a disease, a plague on the animals. The sixth plague, okay, the small dust that was in the land that brought about boils with blains upon man and upon beast, okay, that was the sixth plague. The seventh plague, there was hail upon man and upon beast, okay, and fire and thunder was in and with the hail. The fire ran along the ground, okay, there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. And smote all the land of Egypt. Okay. Only in the land of Goshen. Where the children of Israel were. Was there no hail. Okay. And the eighth plague. He brought the locusts. The ninth plague. There was darkness. Over the land of Egypt. Even darkness which may be felt. Remember God is a God of light. Some darkness. Is also lack of knowledge, lack of vision, lack of understanding. The captives are losing their knowledge, their vision, their understanding. It's not just physical, it's spiritual, it's, it's physical, it's mental, it's a total darkness. But that ninth plague was darkness, darkness so great, so thick it could be felt. And we know the last and final plague. About midnight, I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. Unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of the beast. The firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Egypt shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may, you may know now how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Brothers and sisters, we have to cry out to God. Again, no man know the day, no man know the hour. We know that Israel, Judah, has been in captivity. If you get technical or exacting for some 400 years, God is in the midst. We're watching the weather change. Now, can God come tomorrow? Yes, he can. But you keep your eyes open. We have to cry out to God. Even when Moses came into Egypt, okay, it did not happen in a day. It did not happen in a day. It may have happened over a month to four to five months. I'm giving approximation, okay? But what we do know is God is in the midst. So don't be disheartened. Don't give up. You can see the end coming. And we are going to be corrected and measured when he corrects the nation. But God is coming to get us. Be at peace. Be encouraged. Shalom.